good evening thank you for the kind introduction today's topic is the path to net zero carbon buildings in operation The content of today's presentation is as follows. First, I will discuss what is greenhouse effect. Then, uh, I'll move into net zero carbon. Then, I will discuss the di difference between embodied carbon and operational carbon. Then, life cycle carbon emissions. Then, I'll move into net zero energy buildings. Then, there are passive approach as well as active approaches to net zero, then there are several potential strategies to net zero, then finally I discuss a case study project. First if you look at greenhouse effect, it is a natural effect, effect causing from greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, methane likewise. Carbon dioxide is the primary greenhouse gas emitted through human activities. These greenhouse gases co cause climate change by trapping heat. As you can see in the natural greenhouse effect, most of the solar radiation from the sun re-radiated to re-radiated and escapes into the space. But under human enhance this greenhouse effect because of this these greenhouse gases less heat escape into the space because of that that's if effect called global warming global warming is the long term warming of the planet's overall temperature then what is net zero carbon or carbon neutrality. It is actually, actually a balance between the amount of earth warming greenhouse gas emissions produced and the amount eliminated from the atmosphere to tackle climate change. Overall, the impact is neutral. As you can see, CO2 emissions are mostly from industrial activities, transportation, building operations, or building construction, there are so many sectors affect for the carbon emissions. For the carbon re reduction of offsets, there are three main potential strategies. First one is on-site renewable energy, second one is off-site renewable energy, and the third one is carbon credits. If the CO2 emitted is equivalent to CO2 reduce or offsets, then we will call it as a net zero carbon. Then there are two terms, embodied carbon and operational carbon. Embodied carbon is the carbon dioxide emissions created during material extraction, manufacturing, transportation of these raw materials, to the site and construction of the buildings as well as it also includes the CO to produce in the use stage or maintenance stage of the building as well as the end of life stage of the building as well by eventually demolishing it and transporting the waste and after if there is if there is recycle or or reuse then it will also include under embodied carbon. Then the other term is operation carbon. The operation carbon is mainly come from the energy.
energy related greenhouse gas emissions due to the building energy consumption. As you can see, the left side of a embodied carbon emissions, when the, when the building is operating, then we have operational carbon emissions. Then, according to the building's life cycle, there are several stages. Production stage, construction stage, use stage and end of life stage. Product stage and construction process stage together we call as upfront carbon em embodied carbon emissions. That is raw material supply, transportation, manufacturing, trans and construction insulation processes. Then there is a user stage, embodied carbon emissions. That is mainly due to maintenance, repairs, replacements. As, as an example, if there is a refrigerant leakage, we need to refill the refrigerant. Then that that is a car, carbon dioxide emission related to that material. Then it will go on the use stage. Then finally there is an end of life stage. That is due, mainly due to deconstruction, demolitions, transportation of the waste, waste processing, as well as disposal of or recycle of this waste and there is a small part of you can see the B as B6 that's the operational energy use that's what we call as operational carbon why is it important to have, be have net zero buildings or what is the importance of that because as you can see from the global CO2 emissions by each sector, 30% of CO2 emissions are from industrial activities. Then 22% are from transportation. And building operation costs 28% emissions. And 11% emissions are from building materials and constructions. As you can see, all, all together 28 plus 11, then we call 39% of Gross annual carbon emissions are from built environment. That's why it is significant to have net zero buildings. Um, among, among those, operational emissions is a significant offender. Any path to net zero requires clear accounting of and accurate measurements of all these carbon sources in order to ultimately reduce, reuse and recycle wherever possible. As declared by World Green Building Council, that's a world whole life carbon vision. There's a set targets, two number of set targets, 2030 target and 2050 target. And also this defines definitions for net zero operational carbon and net zero embodied carbon. In through this presentation, I will only consider operational carbon emissions only. For that you can see as a definition, operational carbon means oh, net zero carbon building is highly energy efficient with all remaining energy from on-site and or off-site renewable sources. And also there are four guiding principles for net zero operational carbon buildings. First one is measure and disclose carbon. That is to measure, track and measure operational carbon emissions. Then the second step is to reduce energy demand to have energy efficiency measures. And the third one is to generate balance from renewables. Supply, if there are, if, if it is not sufficient from energy efficiency measures, 
then obviously we need to have renewables and provide remain in demand from renewable sources. And further, if there are a further step, it is it's also defines to include embodied carbon and also other effect areas like zero water and zero waste. In here, 2030 target, the World Green Building Council declares that all buildings within direct control to operate at net zero carbon by 2030 for operational carbons. By 2030, it also defines that the new buildings will will have will be will have at least 40 percent let, let's less embodied carbon as well by 2050 target or goal they specify that the all new buildings will have net zero embodied carbon uh, uh, including existing buildings must also be net zero operation carbon that means by 2050 all the new and existing buildings should be Net zero operational carbon. In, in this figure, you can see the path to net zero carbon buildings. As you start from the left side, in whole life carbon, we will divide into two, that is operational carbon and embodied carbon. Under operational carbon, to, to compare energy performance with other energy performance of performance buildings, we, we define a baseline building that is from as a standard 90.1 compared to that baseline building by including energy efficiency measure we can reduce the energy demand of a building then that building we call this as an energy efficient building then for that energy efficient building we can have some on-site renewable energy sources then we will call that building is nearly net zero energy building. Then if that building has 100% on-site renewable energy, we will call that building as zero energy building. Then if we go further, if that building has more than 100% on-site renewable energy, then that building will be energy positive. In here we have we have we ha we had the new term called zero energy. But in nets net zero operational bill operational carbon we are not defining net zero energy buildings because it not, not specified that the, to have have the carbon neutrality or self-sustainable or, or to be a self-sustainable building because net zero operational carbon defines some renewable energy can be on site some are or some renewable energy can also be off site also or hundred percent can also be off site that type of building we call as net zero operational carbon building. After achieving net zero operational carbon, if there is a reduced embodied carbon emissions in that building, then that building will achieve net zero whole life carbon by achieving both net zero operational carbon as well as net zero embodied carbon.
then I will, then there will be a small short video on Green Building Council's mission on advancing net zero. That the basically that video is uh, is about bringing embodied carbon upfront. We are in a climate emergency. The IPCC special report warns that all sectors must eliminate their reliance on fossil fuels in order to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The building and construction sector has a vital role to play as it's responsible for 39% of global carbon emissions. The majority of these emissions occur when a building is in operation from energy used to heat, cool and power them but a significant amount also comes from embodied carbon emissions as a result of material manufacturing and construction processes, building maintenance and renovation, and when buildings are demolished. In the next 30 years, global building stock is expected to almost double, so we must act now to reduce upfront carbon, the emissions generated before new buildings are used. Our vision is for all buildings and infrastructure to be net zero emissions across their entire life cycle by 2050. This means that by 2030, along with zero operating emissions, new buildings and infrastructure must have at least 40% less embodied carbon with significant upfront carbon reduction. And by 2050, new buildings and infrastructure must have 100% net zero embodied carbon. Achieving this vision will require global collaboration across sectors and leadership on the following actions. Roadmaps to educate, communicate and innovate towards decarbonization solutions, ambitious public procurement policies and embodied carbon reduction targets from governments and cities, innovative financial products and services to trigger market demand, clean and lean construction processes, products produced by renewable energy, designers specifying low carbon products and design solutions, buildings designed to maximize reuse, refurbishment and deconstruction. The market transformation needed requires a radical change in the way we design, build, operate and deconstruct our buildings to conserve the world's precious resources. To find out more and how you can take action, visit our website. Now, as we know, the definition of net zero energy buildings or zero energy buildings. That's net zero energy building is a building with net zero energy consumption, meaning the total amount of energy used by the building on an annual basis is equal to the amount of renewable energy created on site. That means the sum of all energy flows are equal but opposite. As you can see, if you get the energy, energy consumption from lighting, equipment, cooling, pumps, heating and hot water all together and sum up, then divided, divided by gross building area, we will get the energy use intensity in terms of kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Then, by getting renewable generation in intensity in terms of kilowatt hours per square meter per year, if that is equivalent to energy use intensity, then that building we will call as net zero energy building. What is the importance of zero energy building? There are many, many advantages. One is to overcome energy crisis and, and also to reduce energy consumption. And also it, it reduces greenhouse gases and global warming. Because of reduced global warming, it reduces climate change. Then also it because of this renewable energy sources, it reduce, reduces the dependence on fossil fuels. 
and also it protect our environment for future generations that means the sustainability ultimately the sustainability goals we can achieve sustainability goal by having zero energy buildings there are two main strategies for net zero energy buildings such as passive strategies and active strategies this passive strategies are the building energy demand reduction through architectural designs active strategies are building energy supply through renewable energy then these passive strategies divided into again two parts one is energy saving techniques like building en envelope design heat storage systems lighting designs as well as the, the other part is passive sustainable design that is building geometry location orientation like and the natural lighting natural ventilation like this and the, the, the active strategies are also divided into two one is renewable energy that can be from solar photovoltaic systems solar thermal systems geothermal systems or wind turbine systems and for that renewable energy we can have some storage systems like fuel cell systems energy storage systems in order to achieve net zero energy there are four main concerns one is location and the other one is orientation of the building the third one is design and passive strategies and the fourth one is renewable and active strategies as a first step it is required to have a proper site selection and also after after designing the building a comprehensive energy modeling of the building can be can be carried out to have energy consumption consumption on annual cycle and also on the, in the design stage two efficient design practices it can be used to reduce cooling heating and lighting loads and also we can employ renewable and alternate efficient energy sources and further in order to measure and verify verify the energy performance we can install intelligent building management system first of all to construction a net zero energy building it is required to have to have to consider environmental factors like climate sun path wind patterns temperature and rain patterns as well because these factors have an effect on buildings export exposure to the weather weather conditions then also the orientation is also important because for 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 renewable energy like solar panels if the roof is facing south that will be the worst best for solar panels installation and also by orientation orienting the building to take advantage of natural lighting can also reduce the lighting load because mo most of the building in most of the building 25% of the building's total energy consumption from artificial lighting and also we, we can use skylights window arrangements to get natural lighting into the building then there can be considered some passive strategies as well
by choosing building envelope material with low u value materials and also low u value materials will reduce the mechanical cooling load and also if we can prevent air leaks from the buildings through cracks or windows or doors this results in less need for air conditioning as well and also if you can have some insulation between between interior and exterior of a building this layer also reduces the mechanical cooling load then i will go through some examples of the passive design strategies by using building envelopes such as walls roofs windows with low u values then we can reduce the building cooling load ultimately achieving some energy high energy performance and also daylighting also we can use daylighting is the controlled admission of natural light into a building it this used to reduce our artificial light lighting and, and to save energy as an example a light lures light lures is a daylighting system reflects flash sunlight into the ceiling creating an indirect lighting effect in order to limit excess light and glare we can use fixed sunshade as you can see light enters through the upper glass and highly reflective lures direct it towards the ceiling and deeper into the space as you can see in the left side figure the second figure is from skylights and the other passive design strategies to have operable windows allow for natural ventilation these operation operable windows can be automated or manu automated or manually operated by having stack stack effect on the building we can have natural ventilation whenever it's required then i'll move to the active strategies active strategies reduce energy consumption during building process through the use of renewable energy strategies what are the renewable energy strategies use can use for building one is solar power wind power hydroelectric power biomass as well as geothermal as well these active strategies mainly represent the ways to reduce building energy consumption through energy productions these strategies include efficient lighting control systems efficient air conditioning systems as well as introduction of renewable energy into a building as for energy efficient lighting by using led lamps instead of incandescent or cfl lamps we can get a high higher light output from less wattage that's because of the efficacy of efficacy or lumens per watt of led light is higher than the other lights and also we can have daylight stain sensor based lighting as well to maximize natural lighting and if you go further we can have occupancy sensor based lighting in order to switch off if not 
if switch off the lighting in a particular area if not in use And also investing in energy efficient HVAC systems is a fundamental step towards reducing, car reducing carbon emissions. This can be achieved through high achieved through installing variable frequency drives in air conditioning systems, as well as thermal storage systems in air conditioning systems. There are several or oh, having high efficient cooling towers. There are many things can be done under HVAC equipment because most more than 40 or 50 percent of the energy used in the building is from air is to have air condition and also we can have advanced technologies like variable refrigerant flow systems that is a Coefficient of performance or COP is higher in those units to enhance energy efficiency. And also we can implement smart HVAC controls with building automation systems or building management systems to have energy management in commercial buildings. This will also cause improvement in energy efficiency. Then the other active strategy is, is in uh, air conditioning is underflow air distribution. As you can see in the figure, the supply air is distribution by an underflow air distribution systems and the hot hot to return air will be uh, will be gained from the ceiling and also the carbon dioxide sensors can also be installed in in order to control the fresh air into a, that particular area and also you can see that there's a ERV or oh, energy recovery ventilator device is also installed in this building that pre-cools outdoor air with the thermal meal economy mechanism because because due to this thermal wheel mechanism There's a heat exchange in between cool exhaust air and hot outdoor air. Then the main active strategy is re employing renewable energy sources. These renewable energy are generated from natural sources that is from sun, wind, rain, tides which can be generated again and again as or when required and by using this renewable energy it can increase the energy security as well as reduce the dependence on fossil fuels and also it eliminates the greenhouse gas emissions associate with energy use the first source is sun from the sun by using solar pv panels are placed on rooftop of windows where where we can get maximum solar energy we can get solar energy throughout the year. In some areas, wind is, there is a wind potential. 
for that or that areas you can use some wind turbines as you can see in figure these are horizontal axis wind turbines but we can use vertical axis wind turbines as well it's a small scale wind turbines then the other technology is called ocean water cooling this sea water air conditioning technology uses deep ocean water to cool buildings as you can see there are two loops sea water loop and chill water loop in between this sea water loop and chill water loops there are heat exchangers and pumps by getting by getting sea water from intake from 1000 meter or below or deep ocean water uh the temperature is probably low by using heat, a heat exchanger we can get a get the cooling into the fluid like we use in cooling towers then the other one is biomass energy biomass energy is considered carbon neutral due to the balanced emissions and absorption of co2 during its life cycle this biomass absorb co2 and also it can be used to produce biofuels as well as electricity and this can be used for to achieve net zero emissions by mitigating climate changes and the other strategy is evaporative cooling this evaporative cooling it uses water instead of any refrigerant because of that this is mostly most environmental friendly cooling technique but this can only be used in low humid environments uh then we will move into the final part of our presentation that is a case study project this case study project is the brandix factory in atiklo which was recognized as the world's first net zero carbon factory by the world green building council in 2019 this factory area is around 18000 square meters and the, this energy performance index in terms of kilowatt hours per square meter per year is around 147 this is a highly efficient green build, green factory which is designed according to the us green building council and ashe guidelines around 44% of the energy is generally consumed from the cool for to cool the building that is 44% of the energy is consumed for air conditioners and also it, it's oriented in east west direction is west orientation by maximizing minimizing solar heat emissions through buildings walls and windows and also this solar panels also provide additional insulation to the building roofs and the building roof is white colored because of that from the building there is a less heat came from that building envelope because of that 
the factory is able to save over 53 percent of energy in comparison to the conventional factory building and also it uses real-time building energy management system in here. from that indoor air quality in terms of temperature carbon dioxide levels are monitored monitored additionally there are sub metering device provide to monitor daily consumption, energy consumption patterns. Further, in this factory there are 1800 swim machines that are operational for around 16 hours, daily 16 hours. All these machines are provided with low powered VST variable speed drive servo motors instead of clutch motors if they provide clutch motors they are continuously operational during production hours and the energy consumption will be very high but because of these servo motors these servo motors operate only during needle time which account for approximately 70 percent of operation hours because of that by using these saw motors, they have saved seventy percent of energy compared to a clutch motor, and also they have a efficient have an efficient compressor system. By developing an innovative air saving device to reduce compressor wastage by over forty percent as well as by having two air receiving tanks to balance the system and to minimize the loss of energy they have achieved an efficient compressor network design and also 11 percent of energy is used for the building sliding. That uh, the lighting reduces that much of percentage because due to the so introduction of solar tubes into the building without the solar heat. And also there are additional daylight sensors to switch off artificial light during daytime. These solar tubes contribute to increase the indoor lighting level by an average of 122 lux in the building during daytime. Because of that, most of the artificial lighting can be switched off during daytime. And also, the factory has 100% LED lighting. Therefore, the energy usage is low. As a green building, they eliminated the whole paperwork by having production information system online. And also for glasses, they have used double glazed argon film e clear glasses that helps to reduce heat loss and also these glass panes are fixed around the main and front building walls to facilitate daylight setting into the factory and to have a view of outdoor environment And also they have promoted electrical, electric charging facilities to promote electric cars as well as there is a bicycle parking facilities provided to promote cycling in the area in order to reduce vehicle emissions or 
to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And also this, this factory has a zero discharge sewage treatment plant. This treated water is recycled and reused for flushing and irrigation purposes by reducing energy use for flushing and irrigation purposes as well. Then this factory uses a solar hot water system to provide hot water and mostly for dishwashing purposes. Because of that, they have eliminated the use of electric heaters for hot water generation as well. And there are some food waste, food waste compost, composters as well as efficient water fittings as well. And the most important one is the, the roof, rooftop solar plant. It is one of Sri Lanka's largest rooftop solar plant. It's around 1.65 megawatts. This annual generation is around 2,975 megawatt hours, which exceeded the annual energy requirement of the premises. That means this is net zero positive. Net positive building. This is a net positive building. Net positive energy building. And also that they have implemented online solar monitoring by software. As a result, they experience around 1591 ton net reduction of CO2 em emissions annually. That means that their carbon footprint is less than 10 kilograms per square meter per year. And there's an overall reduction of more than 31 tons over a period of 20 years. And also they have invested in the latest magnet for air conditioning. They have installed a magnetic bearing chillers. These magnetic bearing chillers have higher part load deficiency. It saves over 37% of energy compared to with conventional chillers. And also there are refrigerant leak detectors that helps to identify any refrigerant leaks. And also as a energy efficient measure, these all chill water pipelines are insulated. As a summary, as you can see in the previous slides, buildings consume a significant portion of world's energy and also a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions that is around 39%. By having net zero energy buildings, because they generate as much as energy they, they consume, can drastically reduce these carbon dioxide emissions. And also it helps to combat climate change and preserve the environment. By generating the energy from renewable sources like solar, wind, this Net zero energy buildings are le less vulnerable to fluctuations, fluctuations in energy prices and supply dis disruptions due to this fossil fuel problems, etc. And also, e e e e even though the initial investment in construction a net zero building is higher, but they offer a significant savings on electricity bills longer time. Over the time, the 
energy savings can offset the initial cost and even provide the return on investment. Overall, these energy net zero energy buildings play a critical role in mitigating climate change and also it enhances energy security and also reduces energy costs and also improves people's comfort and health and also ensures regulatory compliance and also it helps you foster innovation as well as demonstrate environmental leadership in order to achieve sustainability goals. Hope you gather some knowledge on net zero carbon buildings from this presentation. That's the end of uh, the presentation. If there are any questions. How much for construction cost of a net zero building, see comparatively, just a rough idea will do, although it may be, it will be much effective during occupation due to low cooling. Uh, actually, the construction and exterior building, there are several factors effect for the location, orientation, there and also the building type as well as uh, actually it is not possible to specify some rough approximate cost based on because it differs from the building type and the, there are several factors affecting for that uh, the other there's a second part of that question Uh, in the long run, it will be more cost-effective versus... Uh, yeah, in, in, the, in, in the long run, obviously, it will be cost-effective. Because as you can see in the as in the, in the emission-wise, 28% emissions are from this operation, carbon emissions. And only 11% are from building construction stage. Uh, yeah, actually, it depends on the return of investment of that investor. Uh, but as we, as in our case study build project, we consider a twenty year period. Also, the last, uh, uh, the yeah, actually, we have already discussed about one building. That is Batiklo Brandis Factory. Uh, now it's becoming a common practice. Yeah, yeah, common practice. And you can also you can search. There are websites dedicated for this, this net zero buildings. You can say search net zero buildings, then you will get a list of projects. Are there any specific uh, buildings that you can watch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can provide that also. Okay. I will uh, share that yeah, on sure. our WhatsApp group. Yeah. How to calculate the net carbon on building? Yeah, that's basically there are several factors effect for that. Uh, if if you look at the Green Building Council, their their guideline known green building rating tools, there are calculation methods as well as there are I there is a ISO standard for cal to calculate net zero carbon bill, net zero, net zero em uh, carbon emissions from embodied carbon as well as uh, operational carbon as well as there is a building set tool locally de locally uh, developed uh, tool called building set. You can search in the internet. You can go to that building set tool also to may have some calculation from the software. If you go do it manually, it will be, I think it will be 
little bit difficult because we need to enter em emission factor for each activity. <laughs> okay, thank you.